Hi there, Mark here again, and in this video, I'm going to be building, reviewing, and hopefully testing out this Drift Cobra racing car from U Gears Mechanical Models. So it's a wooden kit, and let's have a look at the back. U Gears say that the intended use is a model for collectors. Um, it's a 14th, 1/14th scale, and it's recommended for ages. 14 and above. As you can see, there's lots of parts that move for the bonnet lifts up, the doors, the boots, and you've got this coil spring here, which hopefully, when we've finished it, we'll be able to wind up and it's supposed to be able to drift. So, let's have a look at what we get in the box. Okay, so as you can see, all the parts are laser cut out of sheets of thin plywood, and uh, yeah, there are plenty of parts in this box. So, under the plywood, we've got our instruction manual. Another very, very thin piece of plywood. I think these parts must be um, curved or bent when you build it. And then underneath we've got the spring, we've got some cocktail sticks uh, for the assembly, we've got rubber bands. That I think those um, return the switches and the doors when they're open. You've got a little piece of sandpaper, or abrasive paper I should say. You've got candle wax which is for lubricating the moving parts. And more rubber bands. So let's have a quick look at the manual. Okay then. The main thing to note are these icons down the side. So this shows you need to put wax on, that one shows you need to rub down with sandpaper. Caution, this one uh, tells you the parts should move freely. Uh, push together, don't push together. Again, the parts should be easily moved or rotated. And that knife shows you to cut off. So on each page you've got the parts sheet that you need and the parts are kind of in darker shading, uh, the parts that you need to push out for the steps on this page and again as we go through you can see it's showing you how to put them together in the number ordered parts and those symbols there so this is showing you need to rub it down with abrasive paper and put some wax on it. So uh, really is a comprehensive manual there are tons and tons of pages right the way through to the end so this is going to take a long time now obviously if I show you every step of this it's going to take forever to finish this video so what I'm just going to do is give you a quick taster, a little taster of what's involved with putting it together. I'll keep building and if there's any parts that are particularly tricky or important I think I'll stop and uh, have a chat about that but otherwise uh, I'll fast forward a lot of it. The first thing we need to do is pop out this part here which is a tool for uh, helping you press things out and fit things together and then I'm going to get these parts um, out of the tree that I need for this page. Ok that's all the bits I think so let's get cracking. So it looks like I need to smooth all these parts down. And then just apply some wax onto the parts that it specifies. Just rub it onto the surface I think, I think that's enough. And just to note it just shows that those two dots on there so you can see the two dots, there's not on the other side, so I think it's got to go on that way around. So there's my first little bit finished, so I'll just carry on. Okay, so I'm getting near the end of the second page of instructions, even though it's page five. And uh, I've got this far, it looks like I've got a ratchet installed. So I've just got to put this part on top. It all seems to be going together quite easily so far. I've got my wax on, and it looks like I've now got a working ratchet. So anyway onwards and upwards. Ok so this looks like one of the trickiest steps, I've got to install this spring now so first thing I'm going to do is make sure I've got it the right way around which is like this with the uh, kind of hook at the end there and it looks like the centre of the spring needs to be pushed between these two pieces of wood that are that central part so that, that central bit there that is made up of two pieces of wood so I'm going to try lining up like it shows and yeah just trying to get it in shot it looks like it does slot in the middle of those two pieces of wood so I'll give it a push on and there it shows how to locate the spring uh, with relation to those pieces of wood that are sticking up and it's shown again here that that coil is going round here and then it's coming on the outside of that piece of wood there if you can see that hopefully that's okay Everything lined up okay apart from this one, I've just had to 
move it with a foil. Yeah, that looks like a good press it's going together. And then it says turn it over 180 and wind it up until the spring stops on that piece of wood there. Let's have a go. And just keep turning and turning. It is really tight until that spring. It will eventually look. It's going to go. And it's going to sit over that piece of wood there. Where you can see the spring symbol on the piece of wood. So yeah, that's uh, quite tight to do up, I've got to say. I've just finished page eight, which was putting the block together. I think this is going to be the switch that's going to uh, start it off. And uh, that's all moving quite smoothly. And this is the kind of motor assembly with the spring in it that I was working on earlier. And just make sure that it all moves smoothly. You see all the gears are meshing up. It's all turning around. So uh, onto page nine. First thing to do is attach that motor block onto that top plate. And then just a little tip for this part here, which is 38, it's a really small round kind of disc. Uh, get your tool and just push it on there and that holds it nice and securely. So as it shows here, you can smooth it off with the abrasive paper and it also holds it steady so you can get that wax onto the surface to provide that little bit of lubrication. So that just slots onto part 36 and I think this part 34 is going to pivot on that. And then that part 36 just slots at the back there and uh, yeah, looks like that pivot's okay. So this is where I'm at at the end of page 11 or nearly at the end. There's been quite a lot going on making this part up as you can see got all these interlocking gears that are going round. I think they will engage with these gears here. They've just got to hold this one in place but it looks like that will go down and engage on either of those gears. That's part 58 smoothed and waxed up so that looks like that's got to go on here. So it's just 59 goes on here held in place with part number 50 and then just check that everything moves smoothly and it's on to the next page so that's the end of page 12 and at page 13 it shows we've got to put these two halves together so you don't connect this piece at the moment you see it's a uh, not pushed into that slot that's got to be up in the air and then I think these slot into here and now we can put this part over that uh, circular part and push it down and into place like so it is still a bit loose at this point though but I think uh, that'll be sorted out later So now I'm up to page 17 and it's uh, making up the axle, I think it's the rear axle. And then we're going to put this side of the chassis on, which is a major structural component. Uh, it's going to clip into so many of those parts and hold them all together in the right place. So let's just get on with that. Uh, there's the axle, it's uh, two pieces of wood uh, for the actual shaft itself and for the gear. And you have to fit those together with cocktail sticks to hold them together. So it's just these round pieces now that go on. Like that I think. As you can see I've already put the one chassis rail on that side. So we just put that axle into there. And now the tricky part, we've got to line all of those lugs up and push them into the uh, cutouts in the chassis side. And I think that's gone okay look. If we turn the axle now, you see these gears are all turning round. We're making progress now and I must say I'm really enjoying putting this together. It's an actual pleasure to put together I've got to say. So let's get on with the next step.
So I've got the boot mechanism working, you can see this piece moves and this one here, and there's these elastic bands that hold it in place and I did use the wrong elastic bands I used one of these, which I think are for the wheels and you need the bigger that come in the kit and you need to loop it round twice for these parts so you just loop it round like that and uh, they stretch across there and then across inside the chassis from that point if I think you can just see there onto the other side here So just a quick note about the wheel arches or the fenders, uh, as you can see there's quite a lot of components that make up that and um, it's quite frilly to get them on I've got to say. Um, so if I go at this last one you get this extra piece on the one that goes on the inside and that's got to go up and under. And then it's got to slot into these notches here and it is really tricky to get this first one in. It was the same at the back as well. It goes up into that notch where you can see my finger there. It kind of interlocks two ways if you know what I mean. And it's just gone in. If you can see that there. And then this one goes up onto that uh, cross piece as well. So a bit of wax on there does help get this into place, I do recommend that. And if it doesn't slide easily into the slot the way it's supposed to, do not force it too much because you will break um, the, the wooden part. I've already broken a part of the dash before and uh, yeah, so just go steady and if it doesn't want to go, um, ease it out a bit with a bit of uh, sandpaper or a file and get some wax involved, it does help. So that's the one on there, here's the next one. Get this one located here first and then that square hole goes over the other notch that's sticking out. Get this one and get the hole first, that square hole, over and in there. And slide that second one on. And then the last one, you've got the square hole goes on there. And then the last one, get the front in first, like that, and then you've got that square one. Goes on there like so. Whew, that's that one done. And so here it is finished, 
and isn't it a thing of beauty absolutely gorgeous it's uh, just incredible to think that this thing's been put together uh, with just wood and wood alone the whole thing and all the mechanics uh, just from wooden pieces that all slot together no glue whatsoever required I can honestly say it was a pleasure to put together the accuracy and precision of these laser cut parts is uh, incredible really the the fit of all the parts is so good there were one or two um, that I struggled with and I think as I said earlier if any of the parts don't quite seem to be going together properly um, have a rethink have a look back at the instructions because you're probably trying to fit it in the wrong order or slightly at the wrong angle and a lot of the pleasure for, of the build for me was um, transferring the information that's in the 2D manual obviously uh, into the 3D components and how they all align up and the uh, angles that you have to get them to slot together so yeah a lot of uh, the pleasure I got was from that process uh, so yeah let's have a quick look at the, the model itself and uh, the functionality so the, um, the nice simple things that it does is if you push the mirror the bonnet flips up and you can see your V8 engine in there you've got a gearbox so you can select uh, forward and reverse and that's uh, this lever here You've got a catch at the back if you push it up your boot opens up your doors open and they've got a spring or a rubber to uh, shut them again for you and of course you can turn the steering wheel and the wheels actually turn but lastly and most importantly i think uh, you can wind it up and it will drive along so what you need to do is turn it over and you've got this mechanism here but before you wind it up you need to uh, lock the mechanism so you've got that switch there you push that across where it says lock push that part backwards and then you can let go and that's locked across and then again turn it over and it says you can wind it up 10 times or 10 half turns and I've got to say testament to the quality of uh, the build it is when I first wound it up I thought oh my gosh there is a hell of a lot of tension in that you really can feel the pressure of the spring as you wind it up uh, yeah like I say so it's amazing that those wooden parts can take that amount of torque so you wind it up put it down if I hold on to it because when I push that forward the wheels or the motor will be engaged um, through the gears make sure that you've got this in gear so push it across to the left or the right push that forward you hear the click and then you can let go as you can see we get quite a bit of wheel speed there with the rubber bands on it doesn't really go very fast but I've yet to try it with those off so um, would I recommend the UGEARS Drift Cobra racing car I think you've guessed what I've got to say absolutely it's an absolutely wonderful piece of kit um, it's a great little project and something I think if you could work with with members of your family your partner your daughter or your son it's a fantastic way to share something a little bit different really it's a great kind of puzzle and kit and uh, you'll get a lot of pleasure putting it together like I did I'm pretty sure so what I'll do is I'll try and put together at the end here um, a few shots of this thing moving along in motion and all that it leaves me to say is thanks for you guys for sending this for review thank you for following along and i hope you catch me on the next one cheers bye